is not a dream. You are not hearing things. It's real. It is true. Get ready to hear the truth, the way, and the life. Hosted by two guys that's not afraid to tell it like it is. Chad McGee and Michael Hartfield. The Chad and Michael Show starts now. All right, all right, all right. Here we are with another edition of the Chad and Michael Show. What do you think of that intro, bro? I I made that literally today. I I loved it, I loved it. And I just told you as I was pulling up that, you know, I realized it was real and you said it in the intro. Yes, yes. That's just confirmation for us. That is huge confirmation. Last last episode, it was a test run, a (laughs) test drive. So I guess this is the official first episode of the Chad and Michael Show, uh, the way I'm yeah. looking at it. I'm, I don't know how you're looking at it, <laughs> but yeah. hey, person. man. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is, this is a jump start of a brand new adventure. Amen. Absolutely. So what do we got today, man? Well, before we go any further, you want to pray us up? Absolutely. Let's right. go. Let's go. Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity. The opportunity for many, many people, many, many listeners to hear uh, to hear from you, to hear of you, to hear stories that inspire and encourage, and that many lives with this podcast, which is why this podcast is, is exists right here and right now, to literally bring people to you. Bring the lost to you. Bring the yeah, darkness yeah. to people. Not darkness to people, but the people that were within in the darkness. Mm-hmm. We bring the light to them. In your holy mighty name, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. This is a dark and fallen world. Yes. 100%. And so it is up to us as God's beacons. As as his servants, yeah. I, I guess it's a to good way of. I am the light. Be the light. Be the light. I call it the the light of heaven. Yes. You know the light of heaven, and there's there's a there's many people. Well, I say many. I mean, you know, I mean, there's um, people out there that you know, the light of heaven is shining from them because. They're there. <laughs> and know? I think me and you have even prayed before we went out logging, you know, at times for the light, for his light to shine through us. So yes, exactly. That, you know, and that's what he does. He shines through us and people see it and they want it. Yes, they do. Absolutely. So, um. <laughs> so, is that what we want to start on, being the light? That's a good name for this episode. Be right. the light. Be the light. Be the light. And Absolutely. don't let nobody put out that light. No, actually, if anyone can put out so much light, that person is allowing that light to be shut off. Yeah. You know, because it's like with light light switches, you know, you have a choice if you want to light on or you want to light off. And if, it doesn't matter what comes at you. Yeah. It literally does not matter at all. It's literally you hold, people hold the sickle of their own choices yes. and what gets to them, what bothers them, what makes them mad, what makes them angry, yes. or what makes them happy. <laughs> it's all a choice. Yes. And it's funny you say that because that, that choice goes into people pleasing. And when we start choosing to please people instead of pleasing God, that's when we make that choice to turn that light off. Right. You know, and a lot of times we don't realize that, you know, we get caught up in, you know, fast-paced lives and think, oh, well, I'm just, I'm doing good, I'm doing good. And, you know, we think that, you know, we're doing good and we're doing God's work. And in all actuality, like, we're trying to please these people because they see something in us and we want them to see something in us. And instead of stepping out of the way and it being us that they see, you know, instead of being Jesus they see, they see us. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that we can't do. We always got to make sure that it's Jesus they see and us, not us. Right, exactly. 
And that's a very true statement. <laughs> and like, you know, when we ask to get, you know, when we ask God to put us in positions like we're in now, um, we have to be ready to carry that burden so that that light don't get shut out. Because mm -hmm. I've had so many people this past week, like, tell me like, oh, you need to slow down. You need to sit down. You need to, you need to quit worrying about other people. You need to worry about yourself. Like, but I don't see it that way because I asked to be put into this position to lead people to Christ. Mm -hmm. So I have to trust that he's going to give me that strength and mm -hmm. that courage, the wisdom to know when I do need to sit down. You know, and when I don't listen to him and sit down, then it happens like yesterday. I got a little stomach bug and I had to sit my butt down. <laughs> right, exactly, you know? exactly. And he told me, like, you need to rest. And I, and I did. I sat down. I rested yesterday evening and most of this morning. And right. now I'm 100% good to go. And Right. So Exactly. You know, it's like a situation with well, what was going on with my knee. Because I literally don't know what I did. I, I mean, I, I tried something new. And I think that what may have irritated it a little bit, but I I could barely bend it back. I could barely walk on it. it I mean, it hurt like crazy, yeah. like freaking crazy. And I just you know uh, I just kept laying hands on it, praying over it, believing it. You prayed over speaking it, that, to it. <laughs> speaking to it. You know, I mean, I can move it back now with hardly any pain. And I mean, when I get up and walk, he's like, yeah, I don't like you right now. <laughs> but you get out of here, and, and, right? That's what, and I've talked this last week with a lot of people about that too. You know, they're like, "Oh, I'm sick, I'm sick," you know, and that's what I get to me. Oh, you're sick? Like, no, I'm not sick. I wasn't sick yesterday. Right. You know, like I had a little stomach bug, but I wasn't sick because me and you both know that Jesus took that on the cross. He took that on the cross, absolutely. And, and if we keep speaking over it, saying, "Oh, I have this pain or I have this sickness," then yeah, you're gonna have it, and you're gonna have it for longer than what you should. Right, because you're claiming it. Yeah. You're speaking life into it, and that's a good clue right there. Because we gotta be so critically careful on what we speak, because what we speak is very, very deadly, or it's very, very, you know, life. You know, it could be death or it could be life. Right. You know, because if someone's holding a gun to your forehead, yes. I mean, and whatnot, and they pull the trigger, boom, you're done, you're gone, because yeah. have your face, it'll yeah. blow your face off. Yeah. You know, well, that's your words. Yeah. You know, it just is, it's, it's deadlier than a, than, than, a, than a gun. Yeah. You know, because what you speak is exactly what it is. You know, exactly what it is. Like Malaysia would always say, well, if that's your confession, I believe it will come to pass. Suck up! <laughs> <laughs> and Sage is like, I don't like you right now. Yeah. Well, tough it out, sucker. Yeah. I don't care. Suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> Suck it up, buttercup. Mm -hmm. but, I love you. Yeah, you know, and, and that's another thing. Like, me and my grandma were talking about earlier when we was on a little road trip, and we was talking about, you know, this girl that had been reaching out to someone, and they kept saying, oh, well, they're never going to change. They're never going to change, like, you know, you, you can't say that about people, you know? Right. Because if I would have listened to people saying that about me, I never would have changed. You know? Right. Like, but I had so many people like you and the rest of our church family that believed in me and knew that, you right. know, I was going through a season, but I, I was going to be better. I was going to get better. And right. here exactly. I am today, you know, better. Yes. <laughs> you right. Know, exactly. Drug free, alcohol free. Like, I, just, I had to defend you in, in the, spiritually. Um, or in the, in the ministry, because people were like, no, I, honestly, they were just, they were just speaking so so much negative and so much death. Yeah. Like, yeah, his mom's death. I, I think this is gonna be the end of him. I, mean, I really don't know. I think he's done. I'm thinking, no, 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 no. Don't you even think that? Don't even talk about that because he's not done. Yeah. He is going through a season. The season is not forever. It's only a season. It's for a short time. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why. Maybe he needs to go through this. I don't know. But he will kick out of this. Yeah. Trust me on that. And here, I am. <laughs> and here you are. You kicked out. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and uh, seeing, like, I used to tell some of my brothers, too, that, you know, because, like, when I was stuck in addiction and I was trying to get out of it and... You know, they would be there, and then, like, I would slip and fall back, you know, and get high or get drunk, and they would be like, mm -hmm. you know, and they were like, oh, I knew it. I knew it. this was going to be, and I was like, bro, like, y'all start speaking death over me before my feet even hit the floor in the morning. It's like, that just makes it ten times harder for me to get away from this addiction. Like, right. no matter how much I speak to it and want it to be done, I got 50 people before I even wake up saying that, oh, today's the day he's going to fall off. 
And right. then I would fall off sometimes, you know. And I'm not oh, saying yeah. it's all because of them, but they were speaking, you know, bad over me before they were speaking good. Right. And see, that's why when I go downtown or I do anything outside of the apartment, <laughs> although there have been a few things or a few occasions where I wore my shorts, but um, I normally wear sweats, yeah. specifically at church, because the cellulite that I used to have it had left a really ugly scar yeah. on both of my legs. And it, it's completely healed. Yeah. There is no more cellulite in these legs at all. It's just it's just a, the leftover scarring. Yeah. I don't want people to see that. Right. Because I know if they do, it's yeah. going to come back ten times full. Yeah. Because people are going to, you know. Because I even have to say a solid prayer, like any tongue that will speak of what they see will not harm me at all. Right. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Because that's that that is scriptural right yeah. there. Yeah. That's literally scriptural. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Because, you know. <laughs> Isaiah fifty four seventeen clearly states that fact. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. And uh, you have an amazing story that uh, you just told me, but I also have a story. Uh, I cannot think of her name, but she works at Isabella's. Um, I don't know if you had any food delivered to you from Isabella's when everything officially shut down during uh, COVID and, and whatnot, but she was the main one doing the deliveries. I don't know if you know who I'm talking about. I don't. Um, she, I, I don't want to say she's Mexican, but um, she normally works there in, in the mornings. There it is. But I wish I, I knew her name. Yeah. But I was with Brooke, Brett, at, at Walmart yesterday. I was in the meat section where I saw her. Yeah. And she had a knee brace on her left neck, on her left leg, not neck. <laughs> uh, is it Jackie? I don't know. It might be Jackie. I, I think I think it might be Jackie. Right, because she's gonna have she's knee a, surgery. She's an older lady. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I bet that's who it is. Is Miss Jackie. Right, but as soon as I saw that knee brace on her knee, now keep in mind, I know I knew nothing what was happening. I knew yeah. nothing at all. As soon as I saw that, um, I'm like, I just got that impression to strongly go and lay hands on her and pray. Yeah. And so she was over there with the big old um, briskets, yeah. where the briskets are. And so she was getting that because they're going to do a fundraiser, a brisket fundraiser to help pay for her surgery yeah. and whatnot. And so we got talking a little bit, and she started to walk away. I, I, I gently got her by the shoulder, kind of moved her back. <laughs> She's like, what are you doing? <laughs> she didn't physically say that, but, yeah. you know. And I'm like, well, okay, before you go, um, let me lay hands and let me pray for you, if that's okay. Yeah. Because you know, that's key, because you can always pray for anybody, but yeah. you don't want to force it. Right. You say, well, I want to pray for you to suddenly yeah. just lay hands and start yeah. praying. That's a no-no. Yeah. But if you say, if that's okay, yeah. and it's a, if they say yes, well, then pray. Yeah. And that's what I did right there, right in the middle of, of the store. Yeah. I prayed for for the, for that to be healed and for guiding hands and whatnot. Yeah. And she didn't know it, but she was walking a lot better when she left. Yeah. <laughs> when she Thank left. Jesus. And hallelujah. You know, I just felt that strong impression. Yeah. Boom. You know, what's your story? <laughs> Oh, the one I just shared with you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's okay. good. That's real yeah. good, man. So, um, this is inspiring people. Uh, a brother that um, I'd worked to walk to Emmaus with, um, I'd been reaching out to him. Like, I'd lost my mom, you know, a few months back, and he had lost his wife around the same time. And uh, he's been struggling, you know, just as I have these past few months. And so, last Saturday, I'd reached out to him, and, you know, he was telling me he wanted to come down and visit. and go to church Sunday, and mm -hmm. I was like, all right, well, he never ended up responding back to me Saturday, and Sunday morning, I reached out to him, and he didn't say nothing, so, you know, anyway, went on about the week, and it was Thursday morning, I guess, was it Thursday? Yeah, Thursday morning, mm -hmm. uh, I'd send him, you know, a message praying for him, and he messaged me back, and he was like, hey, you got a minute to talk, and I was like, yeah, well, before I could even, you know, respond, like, he was already calling, and answered and he was just like man and he's like I just I wanted to share this with you he was like um I apologize for not coming you know to church and letting you know and I was like oh it's all right so I know things come up and he was like yeah he said well I just wanted to share this with you he said you know I was telling God Saturday like 
to show me, you know, something that, that he was still there, you know, he said, and that's why I didn't come, because he didn't show me, you know, Saturday evening, so Sunday morning, I was still waiting for it, he said, and I told him, like, you know, show me something, I'm done, I'm done with you, I'm done with church, I'm done, you know, he said, I was just done, he said, he didn't, he said, well, I started a new job, he said, and we were out working by Odessa, he said, we got there Monday evening, checked into our hotel, he said, Tuesday morning, I got up, he said, and went outside, had a cup of coffee and cigarette, watched the sun come up, and he said, the people that were staying next door, they, you know, the man come out, and he started talking to me, we had a little conversation, him and his wife went on, and I went back in my room, didn't think nothing of it, he said, went to work, he said, well, next morning, Wednesday morning, he said, I got up, went outside, had my cup of coffee and cigarette, he said, and, you know, him and his wife come pulling into the parking lot. He said, and they got out, and he told me, he said, I'm so glad you're here. He said, um, I was supposed to do this yesterday, but I didn't. He said, we went to breakfast and come back, and y'all were gone, guess to work. He said, but I was told to do it yesterday. He said, I just wanted to ask you, he said, have you lost someone close to you in, like, the last six to eight months? He said, yeah, I lost my wife, and he's like, well, God just wanted me to tell you that he's still here, that he has you, you know, that he hadn't left you. He said, and we talked a little. He said, and he asked me to pray for me. He said, he prayed for me, went over a little scripture. He said, he turned around to leave. He said, and he turned back around and told me, he said, hold on. He said, he handed me an envelope. He said, him and his wife went on their way. He said, I went inside. He said, and I opened that envelope, and there was $200 in it. He said, and he said it was crazy because, like, our rooms were paid for by our boss. He said, but I had $22 in my bank account to last me for the next week and a half till I got a paycheck. He said, and that money was enough money to cover all my food and expenses till my first paycheck. He's like, I've heard other people say that, you know, they've had things like that happen to me. He said, but I never had. He said, and, like, it got my fire back. It let me realize that God was there. He wasn't going to do it when I told him I wanted it done. He did it when it needed to be done. Right. You know, and, you know, and then I, after I got off the phone with him, you know, I thought back to the story about Lazarus, you know, when, who was it, Mary and uh, mm -hmm. Martha? Is that, was that their name? When they were, you know, telling Jesus, like, I need you here. Lazarus is dead. Like, right, you right. know, and, that third day came and he still wasn't there and he waited till after that third day where they said that, you know, the person couldn't come back and he showed up on the fourth day and said, rise, you know, and Lazarus come back. Like, and that's, that's what I was telling him. Like, that's, that was your Lazarus being told to rise up. He waited till that fourth day. Like, not when you thought he needed to be there, but when, when you thought, you know, and you were done with him, he come and said, you know what, spirit man, get up. Here we go. Get that Here fire we go. burning. Get that fire lit. Get that fire burning. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And that brings to my mind, and, 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 and forgive me, I don't know. I, I should know the scriptures of this. You may know it. But Jesus did say that if you have faith just as small as a mustard seed, then you can literally move mountains and that's and that's the key it's like like the key ingredient to a vehicle is like three things gas power spark you know that, yep. that ignition and whatnot well that's that's our that's our faith yep. if we believe then that's all we need to conquer this world or to conquer whatever that we're going through mm -hmm. it's just simply believe you know yep. just bam <laughs> you know and don't get me wrong, sometimes it's hard to believe, like, <sighs> right. you know, but, and then, well, and that goes to, like, you know, when Peter got off the boat, like, you know, sometimes that storm, you know, <laughs> is looking pretty crazy, like, ah, oh, how's it gonna happen, but we just gotta have that little, that little faith, that little seed, like, right. you know, and he'll do wonders for you, for for just that little faith, like he can open doors that no man can close, and that's right. Give you the strength, the courage to get through whatever it is, the wisdom to get through it, and 
Absolutely. It's just like yesterday, you know, I mean, I kept saying Philippians 4.19, Philippians 4.19, and my God shall provide all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, and did not doubt, not nee, 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 doubt right in the back of my head. Yes. Well, yeah, guess what, sucker? It's almost June. You got until July 17th to leave for yeah. camp, and you ain't got enough money, and I don't think you're going to get enough money. Get out of here, dirty devil. Right? <laughs> and I'm like, man, I just know it's going to all come together. And then I got then I got startled because whenever the eBay kaching goes off, that's kind of loud. Yeah. And I'm not expecting it. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> money, money, money. And then there was someone buying a shout out. And yeah. I'm like, hey, hey. <laughs> what was that negative voice for to go? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Where are you at now? <laughs> right exactly. Right, right yeah, away. Yeah, devil. <laughs> Absolutely, you know. And uh, speaking of which, um, the youth is literally going to be doing a bake sale, I believe, on June 11th. And, well, obviously here in Knox City, but at the uh, uh, Lawrence Brothers. Yeah. So, well, I guess um, I better get my bacon hat on. Get your bacon hat on. Right, get right, some right. cookies made, some cakes. Right. I don't know why. I mean, I want to get a hold of Michelle Stan uh, Stanfield. Yeah. Because she bakes the best dang gum cookies I've ever I had. Know, man. I mean, I don't know what. I mean, it's she the is love. the best it's, chef ever. It's the love she puts into it. It, it is. It, it is. And it's just like it just melts in your mouth and it just like, gives your <laughs> mouth a warm hug. Like. Oh. I mean, she she got me addicted to them because when right my video went viral for the next to the Greenhouse, obviously I started going to the games and yeah. she has this big old bag like, oh, you want one? Yeah. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> I ate one. I'm like, give me that bag. Yeah, give me the bag. I want the whole bag. <laughs> and Jeff's like, hey, that's for us. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I need energy to make my videos. <laughs> Right, and that was a contributing factor why I weigh 200 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good 200. It's, it's a good, it's good. It's a loving 200. It's a very good loving 200 pounds, exactly. <laughs> no. uh, I was, I literally thought of uh, literally contacting her and saying, hey, could you make like a whole bunch of cookies because we're going to be doing this fundraiser right. if you don't mind, of course. Yeah. And then have her put them in the bag to say Michelle Stanfield's specialty. Right. 30 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> a cookie. <laughs> a cookie. Oh my God. I mean, there's times that I would have paid 30 bucks for 30 bucks for one of her cookies. Like they, that, Exactly, like, right. Like, right? But of course, I mean, I don't know. I'd pay 30 bucks, 30 bucks for any cookie sometimes. Like, I just like cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, hey man. Chocolate chip cookies and pecan pie is literally my kryptonite. That is my weakness. Yeah. Literally my weakness. And here I am, I'm trying to lose weight, get ready, get you know, my uh, cardio and my stamina up for, yeah. a, for a mountain. And all I want to do is drink Dr. Peppers. <laughs> hey, look, that's what I was just telling my grandma too. I was like, I got to quit drinking so much sodas. Like, this heat is whooping my butt with these sodas. Like, Oh, I know. Like, I can't, I can't do them no more. I'm not young like I used to be. <laughs> yeah, my body reminds me of that. Whenever I'm in the middle of a workout, I'm listening to that singular music because uh, there's some Christian in there. Believe yeah. it. I mean, I, in my workout video, I mean, yeah. workout music. Don't, 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 don't fret. <laughs> <laughs> we still rock AD, ACDC sometimes. All right, there might be some Aerosmith, some ACDCs in there. There might be some Eminem. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord! But whenever I'm in there, I'm working out, or as I like to say, I'm clanging and banging. It's workout phrase if people don't worry. <laughs> it's it, it's a gym phrase, okay? <laughs> clanging and banging, you know. Trust me on this. I just want to do more and more and more and more yeah. and more. And my body's like, no, no, no. And I'm like, suck it up, buttercup. I got. I'll make you suck it up, sucker. <laughs> And that's why I'm like, okay, fine, I gotta stop for today. Dang it. <laughs> Dang on it. But we gotta keep pushing though in those times sometimes. We do, we do, absolutely. It's what I makes mean, us stronger. It's, it's yeah. the same as with our walk with Christ too. There's yes. you know, there's times where we get wore out and exhausted and you know, get tired and why do I keep loving on this person when they keep using me and doing the same things and right. you know, but you know, God showed us grace and mercy, you know. When we didn't deserve it. When we didn't deserve it. Right. And, you know, so when we get weary and tired like that, like, we just 
we got to keep pushing. Right. Because if not, then we're not going to get to the level that God needs us to get to. Right. And I, I really think that message that you just said is lost in so many areas of this world. Because people literally do not know, they do not understand that, that God loved us. Literally, L-O-V-E-D, loved us so much that he literally sent his son down in this world to become flesh and bone just like us to, uh, to, to erase and to correct the wrong that Adam and Eve did. They believed in the deceiver, in the liar of Satan. They, they believed in his little, little lie, yeah. you know. But God's like, no, um, that's not my plan. My plan is this. Yeah. And so since now he's screwed this up, the only way to paradise is through my son. Yeah. And he has yeah. to be 100 beyond 100% perfect. Yeah. And he was. Yeah. The only time where he was not 100% perfect is uh, you can correct me on this is when he was on that cross and he became the sin he became yeah. the sick he became the uh illness anything of death yeah. in this world he literally became i mean tech said it perfectly one time in church is that if we literally saw him on the cross we would not even recognize him as a person yeah. as a human being you know, The Passion of the Christ, the movie by Mel Gibson, yeah. that's as close as it's going to get. It wasn't even near as close yeah. as it was in real life, yeah. of, what I, of what I hear. And people were puking in, in the theaters. Yeah. It was that graphic. But, but that's what Jesus purposely went through because that's the love that he had for us. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Yeah. And you even grasp that. Yeah. Like, come on. I mean, can you imagine sending your son or someone that you love to purposely be tortured and sacrificed for the world? No. <laughs> I don't know if I can do that. No. Uh, uh, I'll pick a, a little junior on five. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get your butt over there. No. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, but, and because we are so selfish, like it's hard to grasp that sometimes. Right? Yes, exactly. You know? We got to stop and like, oh, yeah. you know. You know, because just, just like look at it. Even if we lose someone, just regular death, like we still like you know we get upset and we get angry at God, like you know why did you take him from me, like you know, and He willingly gave Jesus for us. Yeah, you know, like absolutely. You know, we can't even willingly give an elder, a grandparent, or someone that has lived a long and good life. You know, we don't. We can't even willingly give them back to God. <laughs> you know, like, and he gave his healthy son that was yeah. young. <laughs> yeah. Like, and it's it's hard to grasp sometimes. Yeah, I mean, really, you know. And just, it, it, when you really, really, really understand it, it's mind-blowing. Yeah. Really, really, really mind-blowing. Yeah. Because I guarantee you, when I first started going to, not to run my very first time ever in, at uh, ALCF Church, a Bud to Loud Christian Fellowship, I did not know hardly none, nothing back then as I know now. Yeah. If I knew what I know now back then, I would have been like, hold the phone. <laughs> Hang on. This is so uh, sci-fi-ish. Hang on a second. Yeah. You know? And uh, I don't think I ever told this story. The first time I ever felt uh, the power released from me was the first time, my second year at camp, but the first time they were at Bear Trap, Bear Trap Ranch. Yeah. Uh, this young fellow named Chris Tubbs, um, he was having knees trouble, <laughs> same knee I'm having. <laughs> yeah. um, and he, I remember, I don't know if it was a Wednesday or a Thursday, it was one of the nights. I got Jesus bones on me. He's sitting there and he, the, the band, they're praising, they're worshiping, the kids are up to their dancing, yeah, who? And but he's sitting there, he's mad, he's he's like banging his fist, you know, he's banging his knee. And I was sitting down next to him, I, was, I put my arm around, I was like, hey brother, dude, what's wrong? Oh man, it's my freaking knee, man. It's making me mad, it's making me angry. Yeah. Like, can I lay hands? Yeah, <laughs> of course. 
Okay, cool. <laughs> so I laid hands, and all I said was, knee be healed now. That's all I said. With authority. And I, I kid you not. I literally kid you not. Both speakers at that exact moment, as soon as I said now, they popped. <laughs> and he flew back. He took out five rolls of chairs. <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, what just happened? <laughs> Dave DeWell turns around going, like, what was that? And I'm like, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> and I look back and Chris is <laughs> he like, he's quivering and whatnot. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, okay. And Melissa, she's looking at him because she nearly took her out. He nearly yeah. took her, nearly took her out. <laughs> he, she's standing there going, like, like, huh? What? 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 Huh? And I'm like, don't look at me right now. I don't know what's going on. I am coming first. But he got up. He like, what happened? I'm afraid of you. And he flew back. I don't know. And guess what? His what knee happened? was healed. Bam! Bam! <laughs> he had no more trouble after that. Yeah, I think you have shared that with me before. I have. I, I? And, yeah, but I, I love hearing it. Like I said, it still gives me Jesus bumps every time. Uh, I just, I just the late hands that knee be healed now. Bam! And but um, <laughs> we'll see. And I don't know if you remember. Um, there was a point in time where you know I would tell you like. You know, because you do have that authority. We all have that authority oh, to yes. speak like that. And, you know, but there was a time, like, you know, I was probably kind of joking or with it or whatever, but I told you it was when I was living behind you. Like, if you ever hear gunshots come running and tell them, like, I'm not dead, like, you know. Yeah, you know? I remember you telling me that. I'm thinking, what, what did he yeah. get himself into? Why, yeah. why did you tell me that? <laughs> That's when I was, you know, still living in the streets and, oh. you know, out there doing wrong and hustling and, you know, like, I'd come to God, but I wasn't fully all the way there. And, right. You know, but I knew, like, when you tell me that, like, you know, I knew that we have that authority. And, like, I knew that if anything was ever happening to me, like, you were the one that was going to be able to put that authority into work. And, you know, I wasn't yeah. going to be gone. Right. You know? Absolutely. And, um, well, you know, and the night that I had my wreck up here, like, I know oh, you yeah. started speaking over it. Brooke started speaking over it. Yeah, we, we were coming from uh, Kansas, actually. Yeah. We went to that uh, thing down there, and we were on our way back, and Pam Rogers got a hold of me, literally called me and said, uh, um, we don't know his condition. We just know Mike ran in front of a truck. Yeah. And he had a wreck. And I'm thinking, well, uh, yeah. we won. <laughs> <laughs> Say yeah. what? And it was... It was crazy, like, because I felt like a bubble go around me during that time, like, and, you know, after I spun around about three or four times, like, the first thing I was trying to do was get out of the car, and, like, everybody's telling me, like, be still, be still, like, you look back, and I was like, y'all gotta stop, like, quit saying that, like, <laughs> right? and I, I don't know which, what the guy's name is, one of the EMS workers, like, you know, he was like, dude, you need to calm down. I was like, dude, you need to go tell all them people to quit saying that I look bad. Like, I'm fine. Like, Jesus got to me. Like, right, you know, exactly. Was, I said, like, tell them to quit saying that I look bad. Like, I'm not. I'm fine. I'm not hurt. It's just a bunch of blood. Like, and, you know, and I, I'm thankful for him because he did. He he went and told people, like, y'all got, he wants y'all to quit saying things. Like, quit worrying. Like, and he actually come to the passenger side while they were cutting me out of the car and prayed with me. You know, wow. and you know, like, and I'm thankful for that, that he was, you know, there, like he was one of the workers and that he believed in God the way that I did. Yes. You know, and, yes, you know, and it was the only reason that I got out of that car and walked, like I walked to the ambulance. They wanted to put me on the stretcher and I told like, I, I, I saw that picture because the Brooke, uh, uh, Brooke Smith was out there taking pictures. Yeah. And then uh, she told me the pictures of you walking and I'm like, yeah. he's fine. Yeah. And I still want to go get my leg x-rayed because I think my leg was broke. Like, right yeah, there. you got the scar. Like, and I'm pretty sure, like, at one point I looked down and, like, the bone was sticking out. I'm pretty sure. Right. Like, you know, but, like, I just kept, like, everybody kept speaking over it that I was fine. And, yeah. like, I was able to, you know, walk yeah. into the ambulance, walk out of the emergency room that night. Like, I, I had to stay calm because Karen was, she, she, uh, I called her. The pound told me to call her. And she was in beyond in hysterics. Yeah. And I had to stay calm. I said, Karen, 
just stop. Yeah. He's fine. He's yeah. going to be okay. He's going to be all right. This is going to be a kick in his rear end. Yeah. I can't really say what I actually did say. <laughs> but this is going to be a kick in his rear end. Yeah. This, is what, this is what he needs to finally wake up and finally yeah. realize, hey, look, Donald Bird, yeah. you need to stop <laughs> this crap right now. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? And yeah. I believe that's what it was. Yeah. You know? It was. Absolutely. You know, I had so many questions. Like, why did he run in front of a truck? Was he trying to kill himself? I thought, well, I'm, then I had to shut those thoughts up. Yeah. It's amazing how thoughts can run yeah. into your mind. And, and you're just kind of like, like, and the main thing that it was that distracted me was I was trying to get to a girl. Like, <laughs> and the, you know, and like that, the devil knows, like, you know, that if he, <clears throat> he could use females and everything else was out the window and. You know, and she called me crying. I'm sitting out here. I need you to pick me up now. Like, I was trying to hurry to go, you know, be the guy that, you know, I always am. Like, oh, I got to save everybody. I got, <laughs> you know. And, right, and, and that right. was, you know, and it was just the dirty devil. He was trying, you know, he's like, oh, I'm going to use this. And, you know, I'm going to get him this time. But right. you know, Jesus had other plans. Right. I mean, I had to debuke all the conversations that was taking place inside that car. Yeah. Uh, the, the, or the van that I was riding in, uh, because you know Br Brooke and Robert just kept talking. Just, this, this, oh, he's going to jail. Oh, they're going to slam his rear ear and yeah. whatnot. And I'm just like, guys, yeah, just no, 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 yeah. no. <laughs> yeah. You know. So I'm like, ah, you know. But anyway. Yeah. It's all good now. It's all good, man. It's all good in the hood. Yeah. You got anything else? Are we good? I what mean, you got, baby? I don't know what else. Um In case you had knows we're waking this. Yeah. <laughs> we we didn't have a set plan, we just started talking. It's just the spirit. I hope you're entertained. <laughs> as long as seeds get planted, as long as inspiration is there. Absolutely. It's all for the kingdom, so that's all that it matters in the end, you know. Yes, is, exactly. If we can Absolutely. plant some seeds in at least one person, then right, I call it a good run. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I've had to learn. I still got. I'm still learning. Yeah. Because um, when I got that camera and I'm taking pictures of the youth, you know, I gotta get myself out of me. Yeah. I gotta get me out of the equation because right. because. My biggest enemy right now is be respectful. And yeah. the photographer is like, forget that. Get the shot. Yeah. <laughs> get the picture. Um, you know? But I'm like, but I don't want to disrupt them. You know, they're just talking, yeah. you know, blah, blah, blah. They're like, no, if you want to be the best, if you got to be the, if you want to be the greatest, you yeah. have got to get yourself out of your own, out of your own mind, out, out of your own way, yeah. and follow my lead. Okay. Now that you're talking about cameras, though, yeah, because you are you a know, photographer. A yes. photographer. I did a job not too long ago, and I got paid with things instead of money. But I was going through these things, mm -hmm. and there is an old camera in it, and this camera is still in the bubble wrap and everything. And I was just wondering if you might like it. Like, it's a, it's a very old camera. Old? Yeah. I was hoping you'd say new. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, not just because I know you like cameras. And oh, stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, uh, there's, um... It's underneath the cross. <laughs> but there's an old, old camera. Yeah. Um, there, too. I mean, I, I collect cameras, yeah. I yeah. mean, if you don't want it, I'll take it. I mean... Yeah, yeah well, and it's like... Well, it's funny because, like, all the stuff that was in there, like, it wasn't stuff that I needed. Oh, But okay. it's everything that they gave to me, like, it's things that, you know, somebody either needed or things like this camera, like, that you like to collect. Oh, like, yeah, exactly. You know? and exactly. Like, and it's just, like, it was amazing how God, like, you know, because I was kind of frustrated when it happened, and I was like, really? Like, I was, you know, I was expecting, but then, like, it's been so much more of a blessing to me because, like, now I get to share these things with people that, you know, they need them. They're like, man, I needed this, like, right now. Like, you don't even know how bad I was needing these things, like, right, you right. know, like, and, like, that's just been so much more of a blessing to me than money could ever be, right. you know, but just to see the smile on their face and, like, man, like, how did it, like, how did you know I need, like, I didn't, God did, like, that's why God let it happen. Right, like, right. You know? 
And, like, that's another thing that, you know, it hurts my heart so much in the world now is because people, you know, they want money and they want things, like, but not realizing, like, you know, there's so much more than these earthly things, you know? Right. Just, you know, and, like, I was living in my flesh at that moment. Like I said, like, I was upset. Like, why are you going to give me all this stuff? Like, right, right. You know, like, I needed money. But in the end, like, the smiles on everybody's faces and the thankfulness that they had was so much more of a blessing than the money could have ever been. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, because what was I going to do with the money? Spend it on some food? <laughs> Probably. Uh, right. It made me happy for about 20 minutes. And then, it's, hurt, it's hurt McDonald's. Right? <laughs> yeah. Now, now I'm hungry again. Now I don't got no money. <laughs> you know? Darn, but, darn. Yeah. But just, you know, the smiles and the thankfulness that, you know, that these people got to get from that. Like, that was just the awesomest thing, you know? Oh, yeah. And I think we forget that sometimes. That oh, sometimes yeah. Sometimes just it's something so little and in, insignificant to us could mean so much more to somebody else. Oh, yeah. You know, just uh, even a compliment or something like, you know, just walking through the store and just saying, hey, what's up? Just, you know, excited to see someone that you don't even know. Like, right. you know, because they could be on their way to kill themselves. You know, thinking, you never know. The, the world hates me. Nobody loves me. Right. But you stop and tell them, hey, and, and sincere, and you actually show them that you care and love, like, even though you don't know them. Like, you could change their day. You could change their week, their life. You never know. You can change everything, you know, yeah. literally, literally everything. Because I, I can guarantee you I've done shout-out videos that I nearly had, I nearly redid. Yeah. And I'm like, no, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't, yeah. I'm not getting anything out of this. It, I mean, because I've said these things so many times in videos yeah. for me. But, you know, this is the first time this person has ever heard this type of thing. Yeah. And the sudden death kept telling me, no, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it, save it. Yeah. I'm like, fine, <laughs> keep it. Yeah. I'm taking fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, I save it, upload it, send it to them. Yeah. And they're like, so-and-so, whatever the shout out, whoever, whatever the shout out was for, yeah. they're crying, they're, they were, they're very, they're touched, and it was the greatest thing they've ever heard. I'm yeah. thinking, really? Really? Like, <laughs> You gotta be kidding! Right. I didn't write that. I didn't write right. it back. Yeah, but, then, but I'm just thinking, like, are you serious? <laughs> like, uh, then, I, then God's like, well, it's because you say it all the time. You know, it's yeah. it has no more effect on you. But someone that's never heard it before, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's like boom, a wake well, up call. I hear me. it all the time, and it still has an effect on me because <laughs> every time I'm down and I need to hear some words. You're right there with them. Uh, yeah, exactly. One hundred percent. You know. And and like and I've, I know I should you know, send you more inc encouraging things you know. And oh I, yeah. I don't do it quite enough, but you right. know you still need that encouragement too. You know. And, oh, I do. I do. You know, I definitely do. Uh, you know. And, and that's what like me and one of uh, another brother that I used to work with years ago. Like, you know, he's he come to Christ you know a few years back and. Not too long ago, we were talking, and I just, I seen one of his posts on Facebook, and so I, I messaged him, and, you know, I told him, I was like, I prayed for him, and, you know, I told him, I was like, look, bro, like, I know I don't stay in my word as much as I'm supposed to because I get caught up, you know, with life, you know, I said, some days I don't, I don't pick the Bible up at all. I said, but I know when, you know, when I jump on Facebook, I, your posts come up, and it's, you know, the it's a little snack for me, and it, <laughs> You know, slap us on the back of the head. Hey, go home when you get done with work today and go pick up that Bible. Like, before you do right. anything else when you get home, like, I gave you a little snack right now. Right. Go dig in and get fed. Right. You know, and I messaged him and told him all that. And he messaged me back and he was like, man, bro, he's like, you don't know how much I needed that today. Ah. He said, because lately I've, I, he's like, and I'm not saying this in a bad way. He's like, but everybody comes to me. Oh, you know, yeah. he's like, when they want to discuss scripture, they come to me. When they got problems, they come to me. He said, and I'm glad that they come to me, but at the same time, like, sometimes I got stuff I got to get off my chest. Yeah. You know, sometimes I don't have all the answers. Sometimes I need someone to just pick me up, you know? And I told him, I was like, bro, I said, I, I go through that same thing, you know? I said, and, you know, I said, there's some days that I've just not even touched my phone because I want to see, like, are any of these ones that I reach out to every day and to make sure they're okay, 
Are they going to notice that I didn't message them today? Mm. Are they going to message me and say, hey, bro, are you okay? Right. You know, I said, and I know yeah. that's not right in all aspects. I said, right. But sometimes, like, I need to do that so that I can know the ones that are actually wanting to, you know, better themselves. Because yeah. a lot of them will come and cry to you and want you to say, you know, nice, caring words and give them encouragement, but then they turn around and do the exact opposite, you know, to put themselves back in that position right. that has them stuck in this storm, you know? And so, like, sometimes I guess that's how God tells me, you know, to get discernment on it of which ones I need to distance myself from right. because they're not actually trying to better themselves. They're just wanting someone to hold their hands and tell them, oh, poor you did, you, you did a good yeah. job. Over you know, like, and... Hey. You know, and I told him, I was like, you know, we have each other, like, and that's why we're here for, that's what we have our brothers and sisters for is because, you know, sometimes, like, even when they don't realize that something's going on with us, we right. have each other like this that we can reach out to and say, hey, bro, look, I'm going through something. I need you to pray with me or, you know, do you got a minute to just let me get some stuff off my chest, you know? Right. And because if we don't, like, you know, it builds up and then our brains start going to that negative place and it's easy to get stuck in that negative place right you know and that's another way that our lives get put out back to the beginning of the the show right <laughs> you know, right uh, right everything comes full circle right there it is <laughs> but yeah it's just you know it's amazing how god works you know stuff out like that you know absolutely and, absolutely and that's another thing that we always got to realize like if someone comes on your heart or your mind that you hadn't spoken to in a long time, like that's God telling you like to reach out to them. Yeah, you know, exactly. And be obedient and, and reach out to them. Like no matter what, like even if y'all last time y'all spoke was on bad terms, still reach out to them because you could be the, the thing that helps them from falling off the deep end. Absolutely. And that happens to me a lot. And I no longer fight it. You know, right. like whenever I get that impression... Sometimes I have to sit on it, you know, let it meditate or whatever. And then, um, regardless of whatever I'm doing, I'm watching wrestling or I'm listening to the music or whatever that I'm doing, it, it comes, I stop everything and I go in the word pad and I write it all down as soon yeah. as it comes to me. And I make sure that everything's spelled right and then I send it to the person. Yeah. Um, the negative part of that is from the enemy saying, no, no like, yeah. they're, you know, uh, they've heard it a million times. Yeah. They're not going to get it. They're not going to receive it. Right. You know, you don't need to send it. When I get that impression, then yeah. I know that, yes, I, I am on the right track. Yeah. This person needs to hear this. Yeah. I don't know why. It makes no sense to me, but it makes every sense to yeah. them. Yeah. And, I mean, I cannot tell you how many times it's like you've been saying here during this episode, hey, <laughs> you know, yeah. I needed that. Yeah. I needed that. I needed that so, so much. Yeah. And yeah. I can thank you, Jesus. Wow. And I know there's been times when you've sent me messages out of the blue, you know, and you tell me, like, I don't know what's going on, but I know this and this and this. And you tell me some things and like, right. and, and it, you know, it hits right on top of the nails, right on top of the head. Like, you know, it hits me right. in the heart. Like, you know, yeah. you know, there's been times that, you know, like it hit me in the heart. Like, like, all right, like wake up, dum dum. <laughs> <laughs> like wake up. But, but wake yeah. up, you beautiful sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> like, People yeah. listening to this going, he's on crack. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> Not today, no. This is Jesus high. This is Jesus high, baby, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um. see, and then, like, okay, so, like, we were talking about Walmart, and, like, people at Walmart, they're starting to look at me all crazy all the time when I'm in there. Because, I, I'm used to that. You know, no, like, because, like, <laughs> I've been, like, going through Walmart, like, Jesus Christ, we love you, God. Like, right? You know, and just being me, like. Yeah. You know, like, I was chasing my aunt around the other day. I would ran into her at Walmart. And, like, you know, they have the little stick ponies. Well, they have one that's a dinosaur head. Oh. And so, like, I had one of those, and I was walking around Walmart, like, acting like I was riding a dinosaur, and I was like, stop, rawr, stop biting people. Like, and then I seen my aunt, and I told my friend Leslie, I was like, look, I'm going to go, like, I'm going to get her. I was like, she gets embarrassed real easy. Oh. And so, like, I'm chasing her, and she's like, stop, stop doing that. I was like, I don't care. But there was, like, some older couples in there, you know, probably about their 70s or so, and, like, right. they were laughing, and they were smiling, and I was like, 
Don't tell me not to be me. Like, look at the joy that it brought them. I you wish know? I was there to film that. That would be yeah. a good TikTok video for me. <laughs> you know, but like, it's just things like that. Like, you know, people look at us and they're like, them, them people must be on drugs. Like, no, if you, if you didn't know me when I was on drugs, you know me now. Like, it's two way complete different people. Totally, totally. You know, yes, like, when I was on drugs, I was uh, away from everybody. I didn't want to be around people. I didn't want to be happy. <laughs> like, you know, I'd force a smile and be, you know, force that happiness because. Apparently, to everybody, I'm always, you know, an encouraging person. I'm always a happy person. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. and, like, during those times, like, I wasn't truly happy. Like, I'm truly happy now. And, like, I'm high on Jesus. Like There you go. Yeah. You know, and That's so, a great high to be on. Yeah. You <laughs> Very know, good high to be on. And, like, you know, on Mother's Day, like, I had some of my family, like, quit acting like that. Like, you know, we took all, you know, all the ants and everybody out to eat and stuff. And they're like, quit acting like this. You know, and I'm like... Really? Like, you're going to, like, would you have rather me not shown up today because I was high or showed up high and been here just being this moody person? Or would you rather me be here and be high on Jesus having fun and laughing and, you know, making memories? Like, right. You know, exactly. but y'all, y'all are looking at everybody else looking at us like, like I'm crazy or something like, right. you know, I just like that hurt my heart kind of like, you know, right. and like even Brooke told me she was like, you need to stay away from your family that's like that, you know? She was like, that's that's not right. Like, you know, they know, like, what you just went through with your mom. Now it's Mother's Day, and you're, like, you're there. You're not messed up. You're right. sober. You're being happy. You're being yourself. Like, right. they, you know, they, she was like, I don't know why they were that <laughs> discouraging to you. Like, you know, right. she's like, and I, like, you can sit here and tell me, like, oh, it didn't bother me that much. Like, she's like, but it did. Like, you know right. it did. I know it did. Like, she said. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's not a waking moment that I don't think about my mom. Yeah. She's closer to us than you think. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. Oh, she's literally over there. Huh? Oh. Oh, because you have her in there. Yeah. She's <laughs> <laughs> you were trying to get me there, but I was like, I didn't want to look over there. Because I thought was gonna, her ghost was going to be there. Oh, hi, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. No. <laughs> I had to do that. <laughs> oh, I needed that. I, needed that. I knew you needed that. <laughs> but no, her ass is over yeah. there in, in that in that thing. But you know, <laughs> but you know, I mean, I, I'm no longer sad. I'm no longer. Right. I mean, not that, that I was ever depressed. I mean, I had my yeah. moment after she passed, of course. Yeah. But it was the happiest moment of my life when she died. And yes, you heard me right. <laughs> They're like, how could he be so happy? He mom died because her suffering stopped. Yeah. She was stuck in a body that never, that didn't know how to work anymore. It was misery to her. It was miserable to her. And when she finally went into the arms of Jesus, she was finally freed from that prison used to be known as her body. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, there you go, man. I think this has been an amazing, good, awesome episode. I yes. mean, it's. I, I needed this. I know you needed this yes, and yes. whatnot. So, yeah, and um, the dirty devil tried to keep us away from it yesterday, but hey, it was meant to be today. It was, it was, uh, it was. Hey, also, you know. do we want people to comment back and let us? Yeah, um, this, uh, this is give um, us topics to talk about. Um, right now, uh, the platform that I used to put these things on, <laughs> I'm having issues with that. And uh, I had to downsize to five bucks a month. But I can put this on uh, as an audio. Well, it's going to be a video, but, you know, I'll have our graphic up. It can be on YouTube. Uh, do you want that public or do you want it unlisted? I mean, it can be public. Because yeah. I want you guys to comment yeah. on this. Give us your Share feedback, it. what you think about it yeah. and whatnot. And uh, because the more feedback we get, the more it helps us involve and make this show better. Yes. And... Makes the show greater. <laughs> yes, so, you got any last, lasting comments or anything? Uh, just, I'll pray us out. Pray us out, buddy. Father God, we just thank you for this great and wonderful day that you've given us. Father, we just thank you for this time of fellowship. And Father, we just ask that seeds be planted in, into many people that, you know, listen to this. Father, we just ask that you bless each and every one of them. You keep blessing us, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And guys, you be good and you be good at it. Until next time, here we go. Bye. This has been a production of the Chad and Michael Show. Thank you all 
for tuning in. Until next time, be blessed and shine the light of heaven in a world full of darkness. And remember, you are loved and you are amazing.